Hello, this is Sundar Ramaswamy. I'm a professional development economist and the current vice chancellor of Kriya University. And hello, this is Madhu Bhandari from Network 18. You're catching our special one-on-one -on -one conversation series on money control, where I talk to newsmakers and renowned personalities about dealing with business and life in the times of a global pandemic. Professor, welcome to the show. Let me begin by first asking you that Kriya has been calling itself a smart campus ever since it was incepted. So in a sense, would you say that you were uh, sort of more prepared to handle this pandemic and what sort of strategic changes have you had to bring in? So thank you, Mridula. And it's a, it's a very good question. And I think uh, all of us, um, uh, leadership and faculty, um, none of us anticipated this, but when we moved students out of campus, I think by March 18th, before the lockdown, it gave us a little bit of a head start in thinking about using the various platforms, whether it was WebEx or Zoom or Google Suite or the old fashioned pick up your telephone and talk to your students. Uh, I think they had to come up with different ways of reaching our student body who had dispersed now to various corners of the country and also into different home situations. So it's not just what Kriya can deliver online, it is also what is accessible by the student body sitting in their homes in different parts of the country. And so I think we had to really think very quickly in terms of what does online smart learning look like. It cannot just be taking my lesson plan that I was going to teach in a particular subject on site and then shift it online. We have to also rethink how online delivery is done. And that, you know, a lot of faculty, some who have had experience, others for whom this was brand new. So many of my colleagues sort of became mentors to their colleagues and the IT department came through with flying colors to make sure that we have enough connectivity bandwidth from our end. Right. Interesting that you mentioned that a lot of institutions have had to embrace technology. Now, tech enabled learning or online distance education is not really new to India. It has been there for a number of years, but somehow it wasn't as mainstream as it is having to become now very quickly and very suddenly. Uh, somehow online degrees have not really seen the kind of recognition from industry in India as they see in other parts of the world. Do you believe that the mindset is going to shift after this pandemic? So I think, you know, uh, it, it's definitely going to shift. And if COVID is with us as a biological uh, shock or a medical health crisis for another 12 to 18 mm -hmm. to 24 months, it's going to be with us. And I think it's going to force education to rethink a lot of these things. But I also have to say that, you know, that um, the faculty and the teachers um, have to also be adept and the infrastructure needs to be supportive. Also, the regulations. Many places have restrictions on what percentage of your classes can you take online. Uh, there is still this worry about how do you assess students online. So I think even our regulatory, you know, what is approvable, what is, uh, what is allowable is all having to be questioned and will be questioned very quickly. So that, right. for instance, if an entire year has to go online, will the degree carry the same weight? And also yeah. students are concerned, will they learn as much? Will employers take the degree from a Korea where say so many classes are online? Will they give it the same weightage? And I think we don't quite know the answers. But I think the more we keep in touch with our companies and employers and are able to communicate what is it that we're doing, I think we will end up with a new normal. You know, we keep throwing that phrase around, but I think we will end up with a new normal in education where I think some combination of blended learning, which is a combination of on-site and online, I think is here to stay, especially right. if COVID continues longer than a few months. Right. So are you in touch with industry partners at this point in time, especially for those students who are finishing final year and wish to be placed? What is the next one year going to look like for these students? It is a pretty harrowing time for most students. Also, for those who want to pursue higher studies, considering that, you know, exam centers for GRE, GMAT, IELTS, etc. are shut down across the world. Is it going to amount to a loss of one year of education for a lot of students around the world? You know, it's a great question and it's something I've thought a lot about. I, I think, uh, you know, I always think being a faculty member is like intellectual parenting. Uh, one is always concerned about your kids. And in this case, you just have so many students to worry about. In general, I'm worried about this entire class of 2020 
whether you're graduating from high school or you're graduating from college because the world suddenly changed on you as a student. And I really do feel for that. I'm not talking of just, you know, traditions of graduation disappearing or whatever. It's just the what is their world looking like? Can they get internships? Can they get placements? But I also remember it's a global pandemic, which means companies also are going through such a turmoil. And we have some of the giants of Indian industry as part of the governing council of PIA and the board of management. And we have been in touch with them. And I think they are also figuring out, you know, because they have to function as an economy, uh, they have to figure out, you know, they do need people uh, who can work. So which means, you know, those jobs can be done remotely or online, I think will always remain. Then maybe things will get delayed, but let's hope it doesn't get completely um, obsolete or completely deleted. I think it, I'm right. hoping the delay is uh, re really what we're hoping for right now. And of course, those that can go online um, may go online faster. Indeed, like you said, 2020 is a year that uh, none of us are going to forget in a hurry. But uh, let me also talk about the positives that are coming out of this pandemic. And one of those things is that most universities are now tech enabled. Most of them are using virtual collaboration tools for education as well as, you know, collaboration between student communities. Uh, is it then time for institutions to give a more global feel, global experience to their students? What is happening on that front? Is there an effort being made to tie up with universities abroad for virtual exchange programs, both culturally as well as academically? So in fact, uh, this is a point uh, center uh, of conversation at the Academic Council of Korea a few days back. And you know we have uh, some of the stalwarts like uh, Dr. Raghuram Rajan and so on on the council. And this point came up. In fact, this can actually create a, sort of a light of fire under already Korea was trying to create partnerships both within the country and overseas as a young institution. It may actually uh, fast track it because by necessity we would want to do more of these partnerships where we can have collaborative uh, seminar series, workshops, but also maybe eventually a dual degree kind of option with partner universities because faculty have always been quite collaborative. But I think in terms of delivering degrees, universities are always a little bit more parochial. Not all of them take it very kindly that they will do twinning programs and joint programs that easily. Maybe this will create an opportunity rather than individual faculty collaborating, which has been going on for a long time, Institutional say, let's get together and do a joint degree program or a joint offering of a course or something, which I think will by necessity once again. But I think if we can control our destiny, I think we'd like to see more of that, which will be a wonderful opportunity that will hopefully stay with us. And finally, I want to ask you in a post COVID-19 world, what is that big tectonic shift going to be for educational institutions around the world? Uh, is this mixed mode of learning online plus on site here to stay for good? Um, I came across a factoid that, you know, in the last 500 years, and if you think about the last 500 years, going back to the invention of the printing press, and then the first big industrial revolution, the second industrial revolution, we have seen some tectonic shifts globally. And COVID will be one of those tectonic shifts. But what is interesting to note is that there are only about 85 organizations that human beings have created that have lasted 500 years or more. And what I found very interestingly in pursuing this research was 71 of these were universities. Right, and it's not just Oxford and the Cambridges. It is not even Harvard, which is not even 500 years old. So obviously universities as centers of knowledge production and learning and delivery has somehow figured out a way to withstand some major, major shocks that societies have seen. And in a way, it'll be good because we will learn to adapt and learn to be resilient and figure out how do we deliver, how do we create how do we deliver, how do we disseminate what universities do really well, which is knowledge and research? Well, thank you very much, Professor Ramaswamy, for joining us on this very special conversation on money control. It's been a pleasure talking to you and learning those valuable insights into the world of education as we all deal with COVID-19. With that, it's a wrap of this special conversation. I'll be back next time with lots more. Till then, thank you for joining us. Stay safe, stay indoors. Goodbye.